Welcome to this demonstration video on general steps for culturing cells using hemogenics proliferation assays. My name is Ivan Rich and I'm the CEO of Hemogenics. At Hemogenics we design and develop assays for many specific applications. We believe that you want a testing system that works right out of the box. You do not need to spend time cobbling an assay together which may or may not work or may or may not be optimal. Instead, we've done all the work for you, so you can focus on getting the best results possible. Hemogenics proliferation assays are available using either an ATP bioluminescence, fluorescence or absorbance readout. But regardless of the type of readout, cells usually have to be cultured. The principles of setting up a cell culture for any hemogenics proliferation assay are essentially the same. I should also mention that Hemogenics has clonal assays in which cells are cultured in methylcellulose. These methylcellulose assays can be used to measure cell proliferation and differentiation or just differentiation alone. They require slightly different techniques which will be described in another technical guide. But just to give you an overview of the types of cells that can be cultured and the corresponding assays that can be used, let's go to the next slide. Here you see the different cell types that can be assayed for cell proliferation using hemogenics assays. As I mentioned, for most cell types, we've developed assay readouts that take advantage of the fact that most laboratories have a plate reader for absorbance and or fluorescence and perhaps even luminescence. Cameo 96 for hematopoietic cells, stem clone and XV, XV prime clone are all methylcellulose assays that incorporate a bioluminescence readout. These are both proliferation and differentiation assays. All other assays take advantage of growing the cells in liquid cultures, either under non-adherent or adherent conditions. Most hemogenics assay kits contain everything you need to measure cell proliferation. For bioluminescence assays, there is an ATP enumeration reagent and ATP standards and controls. For fluorescence assays, there's a customized cell titer fluor reagent, while for absorbance assays, an MTS reagent is used, which is similar to an MTT reagent but produces a soluble formazan product by addition of a single reagent. Sterile plates for, cult for cell culture are always included in every kit, and non sterile plates are included for bioluminescence and fluorescence assays. Also included are sterile foils, so that you can maintain unused wells sterile. Many of the kits contain specialized growth media that allow you to culture cells directly out of the box. These have been developed for specific applications. We would like you to have access to assays where you do not have to waste time and money trying to get an assay to work. We've done all the work for you. You can concentrate on getting the best results possible. For example, we've developed media to grow up to 20 different stem, progenitor and precursor cell populations from the lymphohematopoietic system derived from eight different species. Our luminesque assays for mesenchymal stem cells are available with either low serum, serum free or humanized formulations for high performance with high performance MSC grow medium which has been shown to outpace virtually all other MSC media on the market. But we also provide you with the flexibility to use your own reagents and culture protocols. Hemogenics assays require the same basic supplies and equipment that would be used for any other cell or tissue culture protocol. However, we do recommend using calibrated pipettes, preferably electronic pipettes, since these are more accurate and self-calibrating when used. Dispensing accuracy is very important, since even small pipette errors can lead to large variations in results. 
There are usually three steps to performing an assay for, from hemogenics. Step one is the preparation of the cells for cell culture, including cell count and viability measurements. Different cell types need to be prepared and handled differently, so this will not be discussed here. Step two involves the actual cell culture. If you are performing a toxicity assay requiring drug or compound dose response, this would be set up prior to culturing the cells. Similarly, some of our assays, for example our cell potency assays, require cell dose responses, so this has to be prepared beforehand. Step 3 involves the measure of cell proliferation. This will be dealt with in other technical guide videos. We can now turn our attention to setting up the cell culture step of the assay. In this picture we have three tubes with red caps. These contain 0.9 milliliters of a master mix needed to culture and stimulate the cells. A master mix contains all the components, including growth factors, that are needed for the cells to proliferate and grow. The other three tubes contain the cell suspensions for each of the three samples to be tested. In this case, a working cell concentration of 500,000 cells per milliliter has been prepared. The viability of each cell suspension was over 85%. A viability measured by dye exclusion of over 85% is usually required for the cells to initiate and sustain proliferation. Lower viability values indicate considerable damage to the cells. However, you should also be aware that dye exclusion viability can lead to false positive results. In other words, cells may exhibit a high dye exclusion viability, but they may, but they may be metabolically dead. 0.1 milliliters of each cell suspension is then transferred to the respective tube containing the growth medium. For some assays, the working cell concentration needs to be a hundredfold greater than that of the final cell concentration. For other assays, there is only a tenfold difference between working and final concentrations. In this case, the procedure initially dilutes the cell concentration tenfold to 50,000 cells per milliliter. The final cell concentration in each well will actually be tenfold lower that is 5,000 cells per well, so it is important to take into account the dilutions that will occur for each stage of the experiment. Once the cells have been added to the master mix or growth medium, the contents of the tube should be thoroughly mixed. Remove an individually packed sterile 96 well plate from the kit box. Notice that in this case the plates are white. White plates are used for bioluminescence assays. Black plates are used for fluorescence assays, while transparent plates are used for absorbance assays. Although the number of replicate wells is arbitrary, we recommend that most assays be performed with a minimum of six replicate wells. In some cases, assays require eight replicate wells to be performed. This is for statistical purposes, especially when rare, primitive cells are evaluated. In the present case, a total volume of 1 milliliter culture master mix has been prepared. This would be sufficient to dispense 0.1 milliliters into either 6 or 8 wells. Here we're going to dispense 0.1 milliliters of the, of the culture master mix into six replicate wells in rows across the plate. The configuration of the plate is important. If six replicates are performed in rows across the plate, then 16 samples can be measured on a single plate. If eight replicates are used, 12 samples can be measured in columns. If you find that the coefficients of variation, or the CVs, are consistently lower than 15% for a specific cell type, then you might want to consider reducing the number of replicates to just four. Please remember, however, that if outliers occur and you need to remove them, 
um, from the calculation, the statistics may suffer. All three samples have now been plated in the, in the cultures and the cultures are now ready to be incubated. The culture conditions will depend on the cells being used. In this case, the cells are cultured in a fully humidified incubator at 37 degrees C in an uh, atmosphere containing 5% carbon dioxide and 5% oxygen. Culturing most cell types under low oxygen tension is usually very advantageous because it reduces the production of free oxygen radicals, thereby increasing cell growth and plating efficiency. Once the cells have been cultured for the specified amount of time, cell proliferation can be measured. This is described in another technical guide video. This concludes our short demonstration on how to culture cells using hemogenics proliferation assays. Other demonstration videos will show specific applications. If you need any assistance, please contact us. We're here to help you. Thank you.